Right, in this lesson we're going to be looking at exponential functions. Now exponential functions are where you've got um, a number to a power of x like 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x and so on. So let's just have a look at this on Desmos. So what we can see here is we can see we have got um, y equals 2 to the x. And what you notice is it will cross at this point here, 0, 1, and it gets very high. But what you might not quite see so much here is if we were to zoom in on this um, down here, let's just move across, is that it never ever actually crosses the x-axis or even touches it. Let's just zoom in a lot, see if we can just show that that isn't actually on the x-axis. More than this computer can zoom in by the looks of things. Okay, so we can't do that. Let's just zoom right out. But it never, ever, ever, well, you can see it definitely never crosses the x-axis, but we can also see that it never actually touches the x-axis either. Okay. Now, if that is true, then this line here, okay, this line going across here is called um, an asymptote, where the x-axis is the asymptote. It's a line that the graph doesn't cross. Okay. So that's looking at y equals 2 to the x. Now, what about y equals something times 2 to the x. Well, here I've got my something. I'm just going to hide that one and draw something times 2 to the x. Let's just say we've got 2 times 2 to the x. So here we've got a is 2, so you've got 2 times 2 to the x. And what you'll notice is, is it crosses at 2. Now let's look a bit higher up. If you make this 3.1, what does it, where does it cross at? It crosses at 3.1, and so on. So basically timesing this, means that all the values get distances from the x-axis get multiplied by the factor of whatever a is. So therefore it will cross at that point as well. Um, what about, let's look at other things other than 2 to the x. So let's just hide that one away and we look at b to the x. So here we've got 1.2 to the x and here we've got 2.6 to the, 2 .6 to the x, 3 point something to the x, 4 point something to the x. All right, bigger numbers to the x and you just get that going steeper. But wait, what happened there? Once we go look past 1, when you've got 1 to the x, 1 to the power of anything is just 1. So you get a straight line at 1. But anything less, and we notice we flip. Because what happens here is if you've got 0 0.8 to really high power, then it becomes really small. And if you've got 0 0.8 to a negative power, that means you're flipping it. So what was a fraction becomes a bigger number. So because you're to a negative power, so therefore the whole graph gets flipped this way. And then we can combine looking at a to the a to the bx. So let's just have a look at some of these. Does it still hold that this is where it crosses the axes? So if a is 1.8, where does this cross? It crosses at 1.8. So even if b is small, it still crosses the y-axis at the same point. So there you go, that's just a quick resume of what exponentials do. Let's try doing some questions. So here, we've got to try and identify which are the exponential functions out of these three. So I'm just going to pause for a second and let you do that. What I suggest you do, actually, is you pause the video now. Right, let's go through this. This is clearly a number to the power of x, so an exponential. Now, this looks like a number to the power of x minus 1. Um, and actually, yes, that is also an exponential function because we've got a number. All the minus 1 does is just shift it down, but it still has an exponential path. And we can write this using our power laws like this, or we could write it using our power laws like this. And therefore, we've got 16 to the power of x, and it's clearly an exponential um, where we just take away 1. Now, this one has no number to the power of x. It's x to the power of a number, so it's not an exponential function. We want to have a look at what this one looks like. Let's use practice using our graph ca graphical calculators. We'll go to menu 5. That's right, menu 5. And we're going to put in, uh, what was it, y equals 4 to the power of x. And a 2x. Put 2x. And then let's just minus 1 from that. Execute and let's just delete this for now. And then we can draw. And what you see is 
look it's shifted it's got an exponential type of graph and where it would have crossed one before it now crosses a zero and we had an asymptote at zero it now has an asymptote at minus one so what you can see is basically um, your asymptote is y equals minus one where it tends towards and it now crosses at zero so this minus one has the effect of shifting the whole graph down by one unit right look in the next question copy and complete Complete the table values for 4 to the x. So um, we've got 4 squared is 16, 4 cubed is 64. So therefore 4 to the minus 2 will be 1 over 16 and 4 to the minus 3 will be 1 over 64 for this table of values. If x is increased by 1, the value of y is what? Well, if this is increased by 1, that's times by 4. If that's increased by 1, that's times by 4. So y, let's find a Pen the net. Y is increased by a factor of 4. And part 2, Y is decreased by a factor of 4. Okay, so it's exactly the same idea. So you divide by 4. Okay, or you can say the value of Y is divided by 4 could be another answer to that question. Use your table values to draw a graph of y equals 4 to the x. Well, let's just exit this and let's just use this to help us. You are allowed, you get your graphical calculator or anything, so let's just use your graphical calculator to do all these questions on your course. So we draw that and we've got a picture of it. Uh, I'm going to just cheat because I can just do this, grab it, and then I can just paste my answer in. There we go, there's my answer to this question. So you can see it crosses a 1. The asymptote is where y equals 0, okay, along here. Now, copy and complete. As x tends to infinity, so as x tends to infinity, so when x gets very large over here, y tends to infinity. y gets really big. Yeah, it goes off up there. x goes that way, y goes off that way. As x tends to minus infinity, though, y value tends to this 0 y gets closer and closer to zero to find the horizontal asymptote of y equals 4x there's the horizontal asymptote of y equals 4x it's this line here where y equals naught okay right this question we're going to match each function with its graph again pause the video i'll give you a few sec have give yourself time to try and see if you can match each graph to its function without using your calculator. See if you can use your brain to do this. Okay, if you haven't paused and you still want more time, pause again. Um, right, I'm going to go through this question now. So, what we got here is got y equals to 2 to the x. So, it's going to be one, it's either going to be b or c. Okay, it's either going to be b or c because it's crossing through 1 and it's getting bigger. So we know it's b or c, but we've also got y equals 10 to the x. So therefore, those are the only two where it's going to be getting bigger. You know, you've got b or c, they're both the two. So c is going to be the one that's getting bigger quicker because you've got 10 to the x is going to get bigger much quicker. So this one is b and this one is c. Now we've got minus 5 to the x and we've got one third to the x and we've got minus a half to the x. Well, the minus ones are going to be the ones below the axes. So therefore, that tells us this one is A. Remember, a small number to a high power becomes a small number, hence it gets low down here. Small number to a negative power means you um, flip the result over because it's a negative power. So therefore, it gets big. So this one is A. So which of this is my... Now, we can do the same thing here. If we ignore the minus here, you have 5 to the x doing that. Now, if you make it minus, it flips it down here. So this must be E. Similarly, half of the X would go something like that. So you flip it, it ends up going down here. So it is D. Right, state the equation of the horizontal asymptote of these two. Right, you should be able to do it without looking the drawing the graph. You should be able to draw it straight off from looking at these two equations. Okay, give you a few seconds to think about that. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it on my graph. While I'm doing drawing, getting it drawn onto the graphical calculator, um, we can, you can see if you can get it right. So we're going to do 5 
to the power of x uh, minus one. Okay. Now, before I show you, I'm going to tell you how show you how easy it is to work out. It's just going to be y equals minus one. Okay. We've taken one off every value. We know five to the x should do that, and we can see it goes through there. So this one has a horizontal asymptote of y equals minus one. So therefore, this one could it be it's going to be y equals four? Let's just draw it just to prove it or show it. Plus four. And if we go up, we see we've got this shape graph. But what you can see is the point at which it gets closer and closer to is y equals 4. It's very hard to see on this graph. The scale is not that good. So it's going to be y equals 4. Right, this is a trickier question. I'm just going to do part A and then leave you to work out part B. So in part A, okay, what we've got here is we want to find the exponential model for each of these graphs. So we know it goes through the point 27 and the point 04. So we've got the point 04 and we've got the point 27. So we can plug these values into our equation, this x and y and this x and y. Just plug this x and y into our value. So y is 4. So at 04, we know that 4 is equal to k times 2 to the 0 plus c. Now anything to the power of 0 is just 1. So 4 equals k plus c. Now we're going to put these two values in. So put a y value in. 7 will equal 2 to the power of 2. I say k times 2 to the power of 2 plus c. And so 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So we got 7 equals 4k plus c. And then we've got these two equations here. We've got equation 1 and we've got equation 2. Now, if we do equation two, well, what you could do is just sum straight into equation solver. You got this. We may also get used to using a calculator, so we want to go alpha a, or you could just use your arrow key to get there. And we want to solve the simultaneous equations. We've got two unknowns. We've got k and c as our unknowns. So I'm going to use the first column for k and the second column for c and the last column for the number on this side of the equation. So k is going to be one in the first equation. The c is also going to be 1 in the first equation. And then the thing on the other side, so we've got k plus c equals 4, and here we've got 4k plus c equals 7. We could just, um, I didn't mean to do that, go down. So we're going to do 4, and then we're going to do 1. And I just remembered I haven't put that one in, that's also 4. Before we work this out, I'm going to show you how quick and easy this one is actually to do. So if we just take the top of an equation away from the bottom equation, what we would have got was 3k equals 3, so k equals 1. And if k equals 1, then c must equal 3. Let's do solve, and we can see we can get 1 and 3. Okay, do exactly the same on this question here. Right, we're going to use the graph of y equals 2 to the x to estimate the solution of 2 to the x equals 3. So where does y equals 2 to the x equal 3? So it's around about here. And draw a line down here. And we see it's about 1.6. Okay, 2 to the x equals 0 0.6. So look for 0 0.6. There's going to be, let's just zoom this in a bit. Um, I don't have touch screen, so I'm going to have to use the zoom function just to make it easier. The point six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Draw across here, down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's minus zero point seven. Let's just zoom out again. Use technology to check your answer. So let's um, exit. Uh, exit again. Let's go to menu. We want to go to graph. 
There we go, graph. And uh, what have we got? We've got 2 to the x. So let's just change this to 2 to the power of x. And delete everything else. Oh, I'm um, just going to bring that down a bit. And we wanted to make it equal to 3, didn't we? So if we go exit and also draw, oh no, sorry, put in um, y equals 3, because that's the line we're looking at. Uh, press execute and draw that. We can see they're crossing here. Press the graph solve, look for the intersection where they cross, and you can see they cross at 1.58 here on our graph. So um, for part A, um, B part 1, we'd get 1.58. So therefore, we weren't too bad with our answer. Uh, if we want to just change this value to 0 0.6 and use the graph solve again for the intersection, we get 0 0.73, minus 0 0.73. And again, no, you can see we were quite close there again. Uh, another way we could have solved these, and um, it's the only time I'd really would use the equation solver. If we go to the A for this, so we go alpha A, the solver, I'd only ever use a solver for these exponential questions. If you put 2 to the x equals 3 and press solve, we get 1.58. So let's just change, uh, let's go up and change that to 2. Oops, how do I get my calculator back where it should be? Here we go. So what we got, we want to just go across a little bit. And delete that and put 0 0.6. And press execute and press solve. We get minus 0 0.736. So you could use the solver for exponentials. I would generally only use the solver to do exponentials. It's not very good for polynomials. It's much better or exponentials and that is the end of this video so hopefully you've learned all you need to know about exponentials